Hey, that's pretty neat. So you just push that paint through the screen. Yeah, man. But in the uh, print industry, it's actually called ink. Actually, it's called ink. This is actually plastisol ink. We also have water-based inks and specialty inks. We can use those with different printing procedures to achieve different results on the garments. It's just paint, man. What's the difference? In this message from Upstate Merch, we're talking about print and ink types. Plastisol. It's the classic ink you've seen for years. It sits on top of the shirt. This will pretty much work on any garment. When used correctly, this will result in a nice bold print that will last the life of the shirt. Sometimes people exaggerate Plastisol. They call it super thick bulletproof ink. What is that? Some kind of body armor. Just because it sits on top of the shirt, it doesn't mean it has to be thick and heavy. The way I like my women. There are additives for Plastisol to give the ink different looks and texture. For example, we use a soft hand base additive to create a thinner, softer vintage print. Along with the soft hand base additive, we consider vintage prints to be light passes of ink on the shirt. This creates a thinner, softer, lighter print with more muted colors, making the print look more aged and worn. A distressed print has a pattern added to the design. This makes it look weathered and broken down. These go hand in hand with the vintage prints because it just adds to that worn aged effect. Vintage and distress prints work good on any T-type. They're especially good on softer shirts like tri-blends. If you're getting a lighter, softer shirt, it makes sense to get a lighter, thinner print. We can add a distress pattern to your design and or print it vintage style for no extra cost. For free? Free! The vintage distress look sells well with pretty much everyone. Clothing lines, businesses, bands, everyone. Everyone! Another ink type is water base. Water base ink soaks into the fabric. You're soaking in it. I'm soaked. <laughs> it essentially dyes the fabric instead of sitting on top of it. Water base inks generally work best on light colored garments. For darker garments, we would use discharge. Discharge? Discharge is a water-based ink that contains an additive, which pretty much bleaches the dye out of the shirt. Mama beat the snot out of me when I bleached a load of her laundry. I'll never wash clothes again. This leaves the natural color of the shirt showing through, usually an off-white, ivory, or a cream. Cream? <laughs> which can then be recolored with an ink color of your choice. Being that the design is essentially dyed into the fabric, it results in a no-feel state after the first wash. Is this guy telling me I need to wash clothes again? There are limitations to water base and discharge. With water base, sometimes the shirt color will affect the print color. For example, white on a red shirt might have a pink look to it. Warm pink center, medium steak, nothing wrong with that. The additive with discharge only works with 100% cotton. That doesn't mean you can't use it on blends, it will just have inconsistent results in color and appearance. Basically the polyester fibers, they just won't discharge. Certain tea colors just don't discharge well like red, royal, kelly green. Also, sometimes when a certain tea color doesn't sell well, they are dyed to a new darker color. So dark. Usually black, which causes them to discharge differently. And that's called a re-dye or an over-dye. Re-dye and over-dye shirts are sometimes mixed in with regular stock. Unfortunately, this isn't something that we can control. I'm out of control. Because of the quirky nature of water base and discharge printing, it can be helpful as a customer and as printers to approach it with a leniency accepting and embracing potential color variations and minor inconsistencies. We have a few inks that we bill as specialty inks. I'm special! The most popular are the shimmer inks. We have silver and gold shimmer inks in stock. Gold! Gold and silver shimmer inks are to die for. They're beautiful. What they do is they take a gold ink and a silver ink and they just put little flakes in them. They just sprinkle it down, little glitter flakes right into them. Makes them nice and shiny and sparkly. They just sprinkle it down. Glow in the dark ink is another popular specialty ink. It's basically a clear coat that we apply last over whatever color you want to glow in the dark. It doesn't affect the color too much beyond giving it a little bit of a shine. We put so much Goddamn lacquer on that thing. Another type of printing I want to bring up is process printing. Only processed I like is food. Snap into a Slim Jim. Oh yeah. 
Four color process printing is a method we use to capture full color images on white or natural shirts. Using cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks, we are able to reproduce full color images by blending different percentages of halftone dots to create the full range of colors, of course. This printing method is not ideal for dark apparel. When you have a full color design that you do want on dark apparel, we'll use simulated process printing. It's a lot like four color process printing, but we blend higher opacity inks. And oftentimes it's a blend of more than four colors to create the look of the full color image. Simulated process printing requires a lot of artwork separation skill. I got me a skill. Being that every job and design is different, it's best to show your sales rep the artwork and they can go over with you the best ways to print it. The last thing I wanna talk about regarding ink is color. Color, color, color. We use a Pantone matching system and a Pantone book. I'm getting some sick tones out of this pan. That was a stupid joke. This is a Pantone book. It's got a shit ton of colors in it. When you place an order and your design has a color in it that isn't something we have straight out of a bucket and you don't have a specific Pantone from a book, then we'll match it to a Pantone color out of our book. We'll input that color into the system on our computer and we'll mix it up. There has been a bit of a mix up. I got me a Pantone out of the Photoshop. Unfortunately, Photoshop Pantones aren't the same as Pantones out of a book. Unfortunately, Photoshop Pantones aren't the same. The only drawback to this system is that we're gonna match your design color to our book off of one of our computer monitors. For consistency, we use the same monitor in the room with the best light. I'm blinded by that fucking hot light. All monitors display color differently. We have six or seven monitors in our shop and the same color can look different on all of them. Sometimes it makes it hard to find the true color you're looking for. This is another area where it helps to be lenient with expectations if you don't have a Pantone from a book. There you have it, print and ink types. Thank you for watching, and if y'all can do me a favor and just take all your love and just sprinkle it down right into the like button. Just sprinkle it down. And remember, come on down to Upstate Merch. Merch Upstate to Down On Come.